Yes, that's not Pastor Seb asked us to ask for a Christmas gift from Jesus. So I told Jesus, I said, I have many gifts that I want from you. And just now I just said, and received the first installment. I said, Jesus, today let your people hear your word and respond to your word. Amen. Yes, that's my first Christmas gift that I asked from Jesus. You know, this year has been a very challenging year for all of us. And I'm sure you all know, you know, this COVID-19 has turned this whole economy upside down. Many people have lost their job. 74.5 74.5 million people have been infected with the virus. And as I speak, many people are fighting for their lives. You know, many things around us has changed. Like, I have to wear this now. You know, many things has changed. And the thing is, it's still changing. But it's one, there is one thing that has never changed and will never change. And that is, the Christmas story. You know, the Christmas story is ageless and the intent never changes. Jesus came to the world to save us from our sin so that we can be reconciled with our Heavenly Father. You know, there are many different characters in this Christmas story and all of them play a very important role. And it is my prayer that this morning, that you will be able to identify with the characters in the Bible story and live it out so that Christmas story will not just be a story, but it's going to be you living in it every day. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Christmas Day. It's never too early to celebrate your birth because, God, you have come to this world and save us from our sins. Today, oh God, I pray that you anoint your servant, that the word will go forth ever so clearly, oh God, and your people will respond to your word and not hold on to anything. So we thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The first character I want to preach on is Mary. She is the mother of Jesus. She had an important role to play, and she is known as one who trusts God fully. So the first role for us is to trust God for its outcome. Let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse 38. It says, I am the Lord's servant. This is Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. You know, in contrast of Zechariah's unbelief, when the angel told him that, oh, uh, you will be the father of John the Baptist, Mary's response is one with total trust. You know, she said, may your word to me be fulfilled. And in another words, what is she trying to say? She said, I trust you to bring the word of God to pass in my life. You know, this is a very serious thing to tell the angel that. Because you are telling the angel that I trust God to bring me through the trials of danger and rejections. You know, at first when Mary received the news, she was both shocked and Puzzle, because the the angel told her that she would be with child and give birth to a son. Because this first announcement is going to come with a big price to pay. You know, to be pregnant in in those time is a a great uh, is is a great scandal in those days when the society were very conservative. You know, and being pregnant will make Mary a adulterer. And people will despise her. Because who would understand what is virgin birth? And the punishment for adultery is death by stoning. You know, she would brought shame to her family. And her family 
will, may, may report her to the authority and she will face the danger of death. But even if the family don't report her to the authorities, she will face the possibility of her fiancé Joseph divorcing her. You know, so these are the things that she will have to face. So let's say even though, let's say if the family don't want to kill her, you know, don't have the heart to kill her, but the family will disown her. The family will disown her. She will be left alone. She will be a single mother. She will have to bring up uh, Jesus all by herself. And regardless of whatever is running through her mind, she just simply say, yes, God, I will do your will. You know, I can imagine she may be thinking, the very first question is, I'm not married. I'm a virgin. How can I be pregnant? And she did not bargain with God. She did not bargain at all. She actually could have suggested to the angel, uh, Mr. Angel, maybe let me marry my uh, fiancé first. Right? So that she could, you know, uh, she did not have to go through the trial. But she did not. She responded to the angel with her mind. Uh, not with her mind, but with her heart. She knew it was not time to reason, but it's time to trust the Lord. That's why she said yes to God immediately. She, she trusted God to see her through the trials that may be coming her way. You know, I had a difficult pregnancy when I was carrying my twin daughters. So on the fourth month of my pregnancy, um, the doctor actually told us that the, one of the twins was not going well. And we, she may have development difficulty, uh, disability. And we may even lose her through a miscarriage. But she, he, the, the doctor could not do anything. He said, you just resign from your job, then rest at home, and then hopefully things be okay. You know. So, wow, resigning from job. So, anyway, I approached my superior, and miraculously, my uh, superior said yes to my six months unpaid leave. Yeah, so I went on six months unpaid leave, um, but I was worried. I was worried about my child. I was worried about the finances of the family. So day and night I'll pray, day and night I'll pray. I pray for God to see me through this trial. And today I'm grateful to God. Because in those six months, God provided for my family financially. And He see me through the pregnancy. I carried them to full term and both of them were born healthy. Amen. Each mother know that it's so important. Right. Yeah, now you can see them in church serving the Lord with me in RCA. Amen. 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 Yeah. And more to it, you know, God kept my job. And I just went back to work. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is just so good. Thank you, Jesus. So are you going through a difficult time right now? Can you trust God to see you through this time of trial? Would you hang on to God and don't give up? You know, even if you don't understand, would you just take up the role of trusting God? Because that's our role. And God's role is to make that provision. You know, would you trust God to see you through? Perhaps you have been, you have been called to serve in this church in a different capacity, in a new ministry, and you have concerns, concerns of whether do I have enough time, concerns of whether I'm able or not, concerns of human relationship. This morning, let me tell you, don't respond with your mind, but respond with your heart. I received the assignment for 2021, at least for Q1, from my senior pastor. And she being my spiritual mentor, she was concerned whether it's too much for me to handle. I think as I, I looked through this, as I prepared a sermon, I said, God, I've responded not with my reasoning, 
because I will not be able to handle so many things on my own. But I responded with my heart because I trust God for the outcome. I trust that God will give me the energy. I trust that God will send people to help me so that in, at the end of the day, His kingdom will be established and what needs to be done will be done. Amen. So would you trust God this morning? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And just say thank you for the outcome. Straight away believe there's a great outcome. Right. Thank you. The second role is played by Joseph, the husband of Mary. He is known for his obedience to God so that the Christmas story can take place. Can you imagine if Joseph say no? Today will be a, we will be all reading a different Christmas story, isn't it? So the second role is to obey God at all cost. Let's, let's look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 24 and 25. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. And, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. So when Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant, he planned to divorce her quietly because he does not want to publicly disgrace her. But after he has considered that, the angel of the Lord appeared in, her dream, in his dream and told him to marry Mary because what is conceived in Mary is of the Holy Spirit. So we continue the story from here. When he woke up from the dream, he obeyed the angel. He married Mary and they did not consummate until Jesus was born. So how did Joseph obey God? I tell you, he put God's plan above his own. So the second just, sorry, Joseph put God's plan above his own. You know, Joseph had a choice when he woke up from the dream, isn't he? He has a choice. It's either he will proceed to divorce Mary, which is his plan, or he will listen to the angel, which is God's plan. It must have been difficult for him. Because in the eyes of the community, if Joseph were to accept this baby and be his father, two things will happen. One, the community will think that they fornicated and gave birth to this son. So their reputation will be ruined. Second thing can happen. They may think that the father is someone else. So Joseph will have to suffer the gospel of raising other people's son. The gossip of raising after someone's son. Either way, Jesus, uh, sorry, Joseph's reputation will be tarnished. And the people will despise him. The people will mock him. And they will live in shame and they will lose the honor in the community. There's, there's no way that they can stay there. It's better for them to leave the place and go stay somewhere else. But if they do so, that means they have to leave their family. They have to uproot and leave everyone whom they love. But despite all this, Joseph placed God's plans above his. He said, yes, I will obey you. And he's obeying God at all costs. So I'm sure G uh, Joseph struggled to make the decision. It would be easier for him to just divorce Mary and then I live a carefree life. I don't know if they can look for a second wife. I really don't know. Yeah, but Joseph did not choose the easy way out. He threw his plan out of the window and then he obeyed. God by doing God's will. Thank you, God. He obeyed God despite whatever is coming His way. And friends, this is a lesson of obedience to all of us. Today, would you put 
God's plans above yours? That's the question that you will ask yourself. If it's not now, during your time with God. So let's continue to learn from Joseph how he obeyed God. He took action immediately. Everybody say with me, immediately. Yes, to obey God means to take action immediately. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So after the wise man has had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared uh, to Joseph again. So for the second time, Joseph received an angelic revelation from an angel in a dream. And this time, he was told to take Joseph, uh, Jesus and Mary to Egypt and stay there for as long as possible, as in uh, until further notice, until further notice, because Herod wanted to murder Jesus. So it was night time when the angel visited Joseph. How do we know? He said, get up! You know, he was fast asleep. The angel had to like, get up, you know. But after receiving the instruction, what did he do? He immediately took up baby Jesus. Baby Jesus is probably below two years old then. And Mary and fled to Egypt. He obeyed immediately without hesitation. You know, obedience is about taking action. Saying, oh God, I obey you in your mind. With your lips, it's not enough. Obedience comes with action. We must obey in action. You know, Joseph did not procrastinate, hesitate. Because if he did, Jesus would have been killed. Thank you for that. Thank God for that. You know, procrastination is disobedient to God. I repeat again. Procrastination is disobedient. You know, God's timing is perfect. And if you procrastinate, you are telling God, it's not the timing. That's disobedient to God. And may this sit deep in your heart this morning. The Bible tells us that very night, Jesus left for Egypt and traveled 65 km. It was a long and hard journey. You know, Father, if you were to bring your child two years old and your wife, you already like so many things to do. Pram la, milk bottle la, this. Ah, Tzu Yang is looking at me now. Yeah. So imagine he traveled 65 km. It was a long and hard journey. But Joseph responded to the angel with prompt, unquestioning obedience. And then we see his obedience again. Two years later, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. And he said, get up! Oh dear, he's still sleeping. Or oh, he's sleeping. Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to kill the child's life are dead. So he got up took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. So they remained in Egypt until Herod died, and Joseph received another angelic revelation. And this time, the angel told him to go back to Israel. In verse 21, tells us that he got up from his sleep and took Jesus and Mary and set off immediately without delay. You know, it must have been very difficult for them to move again because they would have stayed in Egypt for about two years and they have settled down very well. But Joseph did not complain, nor did he grumble. But he just obeyed God and immediately left to Egypt, I mean to Israel. 
he was ready to act on God's will and God's instruction anytime. He's willing to pay the price. He, he, I can imagine he left everything in the house. Ikea furniture, I don't know what branded thing he has, you know. And then he just took baby Jesus and then Mary and just went to Israel. Yeah, he was all ready to respond to God's instruction at all costs and without hesitation. So are there instructions God has given to you which you struggle with? Is there? Perhaps you're thinking of that instruction right now. Perhaps God has shown you a certain direction, a certain things to do, but you are not willing to let go. This morning, can I tell you, with love, stop bargaining with God. Stop bargaining. Put God's plan above yours and obey with action. Amen? Amen. This is the challenge that I give to some of you this morning. The third role in Christmas is a very important role. And it's being played by a group of people. And they are the shepherds. They are the shepherds. So I uh, don't know if shepherd pies come from there. I don't know. You know. The third role to play is to proclaim the good news. It's a very important role to play. In Luke chapter 2, we will look at verse 8 to 11, then 15 to 18. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see, and see these things that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. We can learn two lessons from the shepherds this morning. First is to leave your concern to God and proclaim the gospel. You know, the shepherd was so excited. After they heard the news, what did they do? They left their sheep all behind and they went to proclaim the gospel to everyone. They actually trusted God to take care of the sheep. And in fact, that's their livelihood. You know, if come back, the sheep gone home. No, they trusted God to do that and they just went to proclaim the gospel to everyone. You know, friends, it's harvest time. Would you just leave your concern to God? Concern about your work, about what's next year going to be, about, oh, my child is primary six next year. All oh, this concern. Leave it to God and we just go and proclaim the good news to the people around us. Amen? Can we do that this season and every day? Not only this season, I correct myself. Right. And the second lesson we will learn is leave your reputation to God and proclaim the gospel. You know, shepherds are usually the last group of people who will hear of anything because of their poor reputation and because of their social status. They were considered as social outcasts. You know, the testimony, uh, the, the te their testimonies is not binding in court because they have this bad reputation of being liar and um, thieves. Yet, they were the first to receive the good news from the angel. Have you ever wondered why? Why? Because God considered them as important. God elevated their status. God 
Consider them as important. And with that elevation, the shepherd is not worried and do not care about how people look at them anymore. They just go out and spread the gospel to everyone. They figure out if the angel can't choose us to be the first to let us know the news of the birth of baby Jesus, then we will be good enough to preach the gospel. Isn't it? So intelligent. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So friends, you don't have to worry whether you are good enough, whether you are eloquent enough to do a, like an invitation speech to your colleague, whether you are holy enough or knowledgeable enough should your, should your friend ask you, so what is it all about? You need not have to worry about it. Just like the show shepherd just go out with the flyer and invite them tomorrow in fact today to your neighbor amen and what you know god the, jesus came to earth to save us to save the world so we should be compelled to share the gospel and jesus expects uh, us to uh, proclaim and to share our testimony of what Christ has done in our life. And all you need to do is to just share with people what God has done to your life. And it will be a power, you will be a powerful witness. Because no one is going to challenge your testimony. Because that's what you have gone through. And that's what God has done in your life. So go out and do that with confidence. For you have received this news. And you are called to be the proclaimer of the gospel. Amen? Amen. Yes. So the responsibility actually lies in us to bring the gospel to the lost just as the shepherd did. Our role is to proclaim the good news. We have tasted of the goodness of the Lord, isn't it? We know how God is. And would you today go and tell the people that is around you. We can share the good news by inviting our pre-believing friends to the Christmas presentation SHN. Isn't it? I mean, this is such a brilliant idea that God gave to, you know, our creative ministry team. SHN. I serve you SHN. You know, hey, stay home, notice. So come, go and invite your friends. And for all of you who, has, who are here for, with us for the first time, we invite you back on the 25th and the 27th, all right? So verse 18 said that those who hear the gospel were amazed. When you go out and tell your friends, I tell you, your friends will be amazed when they know who Jesus is and what he has done. So let us take up this role of being the proclaimer of the gospel. So in summary, the three roles we are called to play Trust God for the outcome. Regardless of what it is, regardless of any question you have, trust God for the outcome. Second, obey God at all costs. And obey God with action immediately. And the last one, proclaim the good news. And that's our role for Christmas. And I encourage you, and I urge you to take up this role because Christmas will never be the same from today onwards. You know, At one season of my career, I was unhappy and I was just looking out for another job. So I searched around, sent many resumes, and finally I was granted an interview, an interview for a bigger role in a well-known organization. So I went for the interview, I actually asked for a very big, unreasonable pay pack package. I said, okay, now God, if it's from you, uh, then you give it to me. Uh, I just ask, you know, without limit. Yeah. To my delight, the HR person actually think that I'm suitable for the job. So I was very happy. Yeah, the interview went very well. And until uh, we were talking casually, we were having a very casual conversation. And in the conversation, uh, I found out that he actually was worshipping uh, in the same church as I previously. 
And uh, before I left, he said, you know, you'll be very busy if you take up this job. And uh, you will not have time for your ministry because him being in that church. So I was serving as a section leader then. So with very happy heart, I went to my car and I started driving. And as I drove, I felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So I started praying in tongues. I started praying in tongues. And suddenly I heard this voice of this HR person. This thing echoing in my ears. If you take up this job, you will have no time for ministry. I tell you, I started cheering and God's presence was just in that car. I don't know how I drove home from Tuas to Passeries that day, but I remember I was just crying. I said, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I placed my personal, my selfless desire above yours. I'm so sorry to even think about wanting that job, uh, although it's so clear that I will not have time for the ministry. So that day in the car, I told God, I trust you. I trust you to give me a good job. I trust you, oh God, with everything. And I commit myself to do what you have called me to do. You know, friends, I know my role. But do you know your role this morning? Let's close our eyes and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
This is an important time. This is the time where really we will respond to the Lord with obedience. You know, some of you are struggled with situations in life. It seems to be getting out of control. And whatever you try to do is not effective. You think God is not with you anymore. God is not working in your life anymore. But today you sense the Lord telling you, just trust me. Just trust me for the outcome. And I'll see you true. Would you lay your burden at his feet and say, God, I trust you. If this is you, would you lift up your hand? Yes, I see the hand. Yes, I see another hand. I see another hand. Yes, would you say, God, I leave it up to you. Yes, hi. Yes, thank you, God. Thank you, God. You see all those hands that's lifted up to you, oh Lord. They're lifting up their, bar their burden to you and they trust you for the outcome, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, God has spoken to you about something that you need to do, but you are procrastinating. You are unwilling to put God's plan above your own. But this morning, the gentle voice of the Holy Spirit is prompting you to simply obey with action like Joseph did. Because that is obedience. Would you lift up your hand if you say, God, I obey you. I obey what you have called me to do. Yes, I see the hand. I see another hand. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I see another hand. Yes, I will obey you. I don't understand how and why, but I'll obey you. Thank you, Jesus. You desire to be a great proclaimer of the gospel like the shepherds. You want God to remove that fear, the unbelief, the doubt from you so that you can go and invite your oikos. Perhaps some of you has, have lost this compassion for the lost soul. You've been Christian for a long time and you know, Christmas is same to you because you have lost that fire, that compassion for the lost soul. Today is the time where you reactivate that compassionate heartbeat. You know, friends, proclaiming the gospel is our call. If this is you, would you lift up your hand? I would think everyone should lift up our hands because all of us are children of God. Yes, all the hands. All the hands. All the hands, yes. All of us are children of God. And we have received the good news and taste the goodness of it. And we say, God, we want to be that proclaimer that you call us to be. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The last call I want to make is a very important call because you are very important to God. Today you heard of this God who come to this earth and save you from your sins. Today you heard of this God who will see you through trials and challenges in life, hardship in life. Today you hear of this God and you wonder, who is this God? I tell you, this is the God who loves you. Loves you so much that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for your sin. That is how much God loves you. And today you are here. You are just like the shepherds. In fact, you are the one who hear the gospel first, even before 25th of December. And this, this is not a coincidence. Because God has brought you here. Because He wants to bless your life. He wants to help you and see you through the trials. Thank you, Jesus. And today the call is, if you like to receive Jesus into your life and say, come to my life and be my leader, be my savior, would you lift up your hand? Every head bow, every eyes close. Yes, I see the hand. 
That's it, and the hand. Yes, I see the hand. Yes, thank you, God. I see that precious soul. Yes, thank you, Lord. Trust the Lord to see you true. Trust the Lord. We are all testimony of God's good works, you know. And I do not want to miss all of you out because you can live that victorious life because God is with you. Thank you, God, for the precious soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we want to thank you for Christmas Day. In fact, Christmas Day never ends. We want to thank you, God, that you sent baby Jesus to come and die for our sin, that so that we can reconcile, be reconciled to you. We thank you, Lord, for the love. Father, I pray that you see the hands that has been lifted up, that you will reveal yourself so real in a tangible manner to them, so that, God, they know you are with them and they will surely, surely be an overcomer in this time of trials. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For the ones who have lifted their hands to accept Jesus into your heart, would you pray with me as I said this prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, would Christians sit together with them? Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I know I'm forgiven. Today, I invite you, God, into my life to be my saviour to be my master in Jesus name we pray Amen let's all give God a loud so remember Christmas is on its way in fact Christmas is every day because every day we are called to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Would you lift up your hands as I pray the benediction over you? Thank you, Jesus. And may the Lord and may our Father in heaven, whom loved us so much, and Jesus Christ, whom grace is all sufficient for us, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit be with you for now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, so this is uh, an announcement. Uh, you will need to leave by zoned. So we have the zone B first, then later on, followed by zone A. Our connectors will guide you uh, to leave this place. And I want, we, we would love to see you. We would love to see you uh, on the 25th and on the 27th uh, to join us for this and you see how stay home or rather stay happy notice look like all right amen amen and for those online if you need a prayer uh, you can log into this meeting id straight away because our leaders are all ready to pray with you thank you god thank you jesus